Bill's Purple Oasis Garden. Pruning a tree tutorial. Dead branches, branches that cross over each other or that they, they crowd each other. They're, they're too tight against each other. One of the purposes here is to prevent this little tree from competing with itself. And if you have two branches in the same spot, they're, they're literally competing for the same air, the same sun, so we'll take those off. And then thirdly, it'll be just to, to kind of lighten up the weight on the end of the canopy. So this actually is in pretty good shape right now. Um, I don't see anything on it that's broken or crossing over onto anything. So I'm just going to lighten off some of the weight. And when you make your cuts, you're looking for a downward, outward facing bud. So if, if this was a branch coming off the tree, you want that bud, that little growth area that's coming off and it's kind of facing outward and it's on the downward side of the branch there. So it's on the other side, but it's growing outward. It's not facing straight down and it's not sideways. And when you make your cuts on these buds, I want you to do it at 45 degree angles. So the bottom of your cut is at the bottom of the bud. So you, you come across the bud and you make a nice clean cut. So that bottom part of my cut is at the bottom part of my bud. It doesn't go below it. And we do that because the tree is naturally going to die back a little bit. And we want, don't want it dying back into that bud. We want that to kind of seal over itself. So if we cut it too low and it'll end up dying, we might kill that bud there. When you're making your pruning cuts, use a pair of bypass pruners. Bypass means the blade, the, the cutting part, is going to bypass my anvil. So it goes along the side of it. There are flower cutting uh, pruners out there that the blade will actually come down onto the anvil. And that's to, to crush the stem to allow those cut flowers to absorb more water. We don't want that when we're making our prunes. We want a nice clean cut. Um, just like if you're going into surgery, you want your uh, surgeon to have a sharp scalpel and not a butter knife, right? Because we want that to heal over nicely. Same thing with the tree. Um, and I'm going to tell you something you're not going to want to hear right now. We don't want to take, we don't want these trees to fruit for the next three, three to four years. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's competing with itself. Making fruit takes a lot of energy. And we need this little, poor little tree to use all its energy now to grow new roots and to repair itself from after being planted. And again, like I said, it's, it's been in the production nursery, um, so it, it's not the proper structure. And we're gonna try to fix that. So first thing we do, is this is already flowered and fruited and you can see these little fruits on it. Um, as the season goes on, they're gonna get bigger. So just pinch them off. Once the fruit's set, you, you may wanna wait till they're a little bigger, they'll come off easier. Clean the whole tree of any fruit that it might have. Now, when I was given the, the planting demonstration, I talked about the fruiting the, the, the graft area. This is two different plants right here. Mm -hmm. This part right down here, you can see that discoloration and uh, a different width or diameter of the trunk. That's the, fruit, the rooting stock. And what they've done is they've taken a plant that has really aggressive roots disease resistant roots, aggressive roots, and they've grafted it to a plant that's gonna give you really yummy fruit and lots of it. So this tree would never happen in the wild. It happened in a, a lab somewhere. So they grafted the fruiting stock to the rooting stock in an effort to make as much fruit as possible. So now this little tree, these little branches are gonna just produce all sorts of fruit. And if we let that fruit set up and mature, that weight is gonna come out and it's eventually gonna break this poor little branch off. So we're gonna prevent it from fruiting and we're gonna restructure this tree a little bit to keep it from breaking.
Okay, so now I'm going to, again, this is going to be the spring or early summer pruning just to reduce some of the weight of the tree's canopy. I'm not really worried about the structure too much right now um, because we want to leave as many leaves on this tree as possible. Leaves are the food production part of a plant. It's not the roots. The, uh, when you feed your tree with fertilizer, you're not really giving it food. You're giving it vitamins, kind of. You're giving it nutrients to help it process its food better. Um, it's like if you had your, your vitamin E supplement today, yeah, you ate it, but it didn't fill up your belly. The same thing with the trees. The, the leaves produce the food. So this time of year when they're actively growing, we want as much food on them as possible. We have two different kinds of trees out here. We, uh, we have um, ones that have a central leader to them, and these are your apples and pears. And then we have other ones that are going to be a vase shape, and there's going to be your stone fruits, your cherries, your plums, your peaches, nectarines, anything with that big pit seed in the middle is considered a stone fruit. And we're going to prune those like a vase. We're going to prune our apples and pears with a leader, with a central leader. And if you think of the leader as kind of the hub, if you were standing up above it and looking straight down, that trunk would be coming straight up at you, and then we'd have lateral branches coming off like spokes of a wheel. So that's the structure we want at the end of the day for this. This is already starting to flop over, so I'm going to go up to the, this leader here and find a bud that's kind of going in that upward direction and use that as the modified leader to this tree. Okay. When you're making your cuts too with your, your bypass pruner, keep the blade against the trunk of where you're cutting. If you put the anvil next to it and you make your cut, you're going to have little stubs and those just don't heal as well as a nice uh, tight cut with your blade up against it. So are okay. you cutting above the, the um, semi? Yeah, I'm, I'm making my cut. So I'm figuring out where I want my cut to be. So I want to keep that branch. So I'm going to make my cut right like that. Okay. So my cut is actually above the the base of that bud. Right there. So there's a nice straight line right there. Why did you leave that one with the big stick? Yeah. What did I leave on here? Yeah. Right there. Why did I leave this? No, the other one. Right, right this front, one? Right in front of you. Right this one. Why did I leave this one? With all that. Yeah. Well, oh, because it looks dead from here, right? Is that what you're right? There's an, actually a bud right here. It's probably hard to see from way back there, but there's a place where there's going to be growth that's going to come out eventually. So this is all I would do with the newly planted tree right now. I just took off some of the weight. Um, I didn't worry too much about its structure. Um, because I'm going to do that come winter time. Um, again, right now it's growing, it needs as many leaves as it can. If I tried to give it its structure right now, I'd be putting it into, into a food deficit and it really needs all its food it can. In the winter time, it's not going to have any leaves on it. It goes dormant, it drops all its leaves, it's not producing any food at that point, it's just in hibernation. So we can do a lot of cutting on that fairly severely and it doesn't hurt the overall production of the tree. So this is uh, the type of pruning um, Carl and Josh are going to do here in the next week or two to all these trees in this orchard to keep them from falling over and from branches breaking. Um, and now I'm going to do the winter pruning and for you for the week of heart, I, I'm giving you a fair warning. I'm going to really cut a lot off of this tree right now. It's going to look like a stick and you're going to think, I, I don't know what I'm talking about, what I'm doing. But come next spring, it, you, you'll see the, the goodness that is, came from it. When we figure out the structure of our tree, we want to find branches that are coming off that trunk at a 45 degree angle. So if this were my trunk, 
I'd want something that's coming off at a 45 to 60 degree angle. We don't want it much tighter than that, and we definitely don't want it at a 90 degree angle. 90 degree angle is really tough on a tree. If you think if you're holding your arm straight out and you're holding a 15 pound weight, you're putting a lot of strain on your arm holding it out like that. It's really tough to do. Same thing with a branch. When it's growing straight out at 90 degrees and you got all that fruit on it, you're putting a lot of strain and a good chance of it breaking. If you bring it up at that 45 degree angle or 60 degree angle, the structure of the tree is holding up a lot of the weight. So it's actually coming down through here, not so much in the joint. But if you do much beyond that 45 degree angle, you're starting to compete. And right now it doesn't look like much, like this branch especially, it's coming off a little tighter than 45 degrees. This one too. And you think, well, it's got plenty of room to grow. And that's true. When, when the branch is only this big, that angle is not a big deal. But when that branch is as big or bigger than your arm, suddenly that two inches is gone and now your bark is rubbing against bark and it's not going to uh, grow to its full circumference it's going to start rubbing against each other allow for disease and insect to get in so we want to keep the branches away from the trunk so again we want to come off at about a 45 or 60 degree angle well, something like that either of those is pretty good um, and we're going to want to space those about six inches, minimum eight inches apart. A little bit more is better. <coughs> and on a tree this size, that's not going to look like very many branches when I'm done pruning. But on a 25, 30 foot tree, and you have a four inch branch coming off, it works out very well. And that's what we're going to do here is we're going to prune it for the future, not for today. Are these the apples and pears can get 20, 30, 40 feet tall. When you're, the, the fruit production industry doesn't let them get that tall. They have machines that will go through the orchards and those machines may be 15, 20 feet tall. That's as tall as they let their trees get. Because it's easier to pick a fruit right here than to get your ladder out and then have to climb up another 20 feet to pick that fruit. So in a, an area like this, where we don't really care about shade so much, we're more concerned about fruit production, we're going to have our first branch wanting to come off at about knee height. Now this one doesn't have any growing right now, but that doesn't mean we can't uh, have one in the future. Because when I make all these cuts on this tree, it's going to respond by putting out more growth. Realize Eric just messed me up big time, I've got to recover. So, um, after I cut this poor little tree up, all these buds are going to break on it in about a month and a half, two months. It's going to be green and bushy all up and down. And that's when Carl and Josh can start making some decisions on where their lowest uh, fruiting branch is going to be. When you're pruning a tree and you're doing these hard cuts, you got to remember you can always come back five minutes, ten minutes, an hour, a day, a week later and make the cut can't put the branch back on. So when in doubt, don't cut it. Um, a lot of times I'll get frustrated. I'll go out there, I'm looking at my tree. Uh, I stop, put my pruners down, I go inside, I get a beer, and I stand there and I just stare at that tree for 15, 20 minutes before I make my next cut. Again, it's easier to cut it off later than it is to put it back on. It, it sounds very scientific, but the truth of the matter is, this is an art form, and it, every tree is different. Take your time, look at it, come back to it, look at it again, and go from there. It, it's better to go slow than go too fast. So, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for my first good low branch coming off the tree at about a 45 degree angle um, that looks healthy. And I've got actually a lot to choose from right here. Three of those branches right there are in fairly good shape. So since I've got a choice down here, I'm going to wait to cut this and look up a little higher. I've got to go six to eight inches up at least, so I've got to look for some more. Well, that's a pretty good Feels one right Purple here. Oasis Garden. Off. And I talked about that competition. 